Okay, as I promised, I'm going to uh, do a quick uh, explanation of the automatic tension on the Wilcox and Gibbs machines made after 1875. Uh, everybody seems to be intimidated by these and ask questions uh, about what should I do with my tensions not working. And I've heard so many different answers, and especially the answer that, that, that irritates me the most is add a little oil to it. Well, it says on the top, use no oil. The reason you don't use any oil in it because it's going to screw up the tension. Uh, the dirt is the problem, and the dirt needs to be got out. Everybody's afraid to take them out because they don't know how to get them apart. Um, I've already taken this machine apart, so I'm going to make it real easy here real quick. This, of course, the main shaft has to come out of this machine. That piece is going to have to, there's two screws right there come loose. This slides forward. I may have to take some emery cloth and clean the shaft to where this foot will come apart easy. But take a hold of this part right here hold on to it twist the shaft and come out of there all the way okay now this part's just going to drop so you that's why you had to hold on to it this is the adjustment for the tension right here best thing to do is while you have this apart all this good make sure you got it all good take a wrench and get this loose get it to where it'll move free but put it back to about where it's at um i'll tell you why in a minute okay the trick to getting this apart is underneath here it's probably going to be really hard to see but in there, there is a, a twist lock. And what you have to do is, let me take something and set under it here. Where we can hold it up, where the camera can still see in there. Okay. Um, I like to use my needle nose, but they're in the garage and I'm using a walker to walk right now. So I can't go get them. So I'm going to use a pair of forceps. It's not hard to get it a loose and get it a loose <laughs> it's not hard to get loose you just have to what you have to do is there's two slots in there you need to catch one of these one of you each side of your uh, pliers or forceps whatever you have take one finger and hold up at the top push in and give it a quarter of a turn and I ain't caught it because I wasn't in it good time here um, let me try these others like I said my forceps will work a lot better I mean my needle nose would work a lot better I've almost got it and it's hard to turn when I get this off I'll I'll show you what's holding this and it'll make it it'll make it a lot more sense will pop out of there when it's once it does come loose I promise all right it is loose <clears throat> I have to turn it up and put your finger over it so when it falls out <laughs> Don't like a liar out of me. <laughs> I just put this back in there a minute ago and now I don't want to come back out. The reason it's being so hard to get apart is because when I put it back together it was tight to get back together. 
And let's see what I've got going on. I'm gonna have to look. Oh, see what I did. I actually did not unlock it. I locked it completely. I had it partially unlocked when I started. Now I have completely locked it. I'm going to tell you forceps aren't the best tool to do it with because the ends are rounded and they're not holding. <laughs> this video is going to be longer than I thought it was going to be just because I was not completely prepared for a problem. <laughs> Put something in there where I hold them apart. Can you believe I have not moved this thing? I have never had one yet. I couldn't get apart. And now this one, after I took it apart and put it back together, I can't get it apart. There we go. All right. There's the keeper right here. See the way that's made on the bottom. I'll show you how that goes back together in just a minute. Best thing to do is lay these pieces out in a certain order or in the order you take them off. Take this piece off very carefully. While we've got this here in my hands, I'm going to show you. Right here is what was keeping that together. That slides into that, slides around, have a quarter turn. And then it locks up in that slot. So when this is in there, what you have to do is push against the force of the spring, push that down, turn it, and slide it off. That's what was holding this together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take, you got a top ring that sets on two little pins. You have a middle one here that might be tight because this one was tight when I took it apart already. I've not cleaned this machine like I said so everything is still a little rusty and refusing to move much. <clears throat> This is so funny because I just put this machine back together. Or this part of the machine back together. I'm not going to get rough with it. I'm just, I have no way to get a hold of it really. There we go. This, these little pins hold this little ring pretty tight. comes and what I want to why I'm being so careful right here uh, is I'm gonna flip that over set it in that cap that it came out of there is a little piece of felt you do have these two little pieces in the center right here I'm gonna flip them over Put them on the little post here that I took them off of. There's a little piece of felt right here that 
causes everything to work right. This little piece of felt needs to be intact. The machine, the tensioner will work without it, but it, your thread is going to run too close to this edge right here, and I'm and and it will fray the thread. Um, it's not all that hard to make this piece of felt, um, but you got to be real careful, and you got to make it fit. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to push through from the top and push these other pieces out one at a time that are inside. What you're going to have is you're going to have a Got a rubber piece here that would have been, here's the keeper, that would have been on top of that keeper. You have a spring with two little metal cups on the ends. It goes, it'll go on either way just it goes right on top of that and last kind of need something small to push with though. there's one more identical rubber be rubber piece it goes right here so this is your little stack that goes underneath goes from underneath and this little piece is all that goes on top one more thing you want to clean the machine really really good um let's see where is my little I don't have my little brass drift in here, but I don't mind doing it with this. Because it's not going to hurt anything what I'm fixing to do. Why did I say that? I break something because, believe it or not, a Wilcox and Gibbs is the only machine out of all the machines that I've worked on. A Wilcox and Gibbs is the machine that I have broken parts on. Okay. All right, as you can see, this part that's clean all the way through. There's nothing else in there. Now what I would do, clean this up, these pieces here, take a, uh, lay them all out in a exploded view. Take a picture of them. Um, if you're not familiar with what you took apart and you're not able to get something back together in a few minutes later, take them all apart, put them, if they're rusty, put them in evaporust, whatever, start putting them back together. Uh, the worst, the worst part of it is getting this back together without pinching that piece of felt. That piece of felt, even if it's old and dry, uh, what I would do, I would clean that piece of felt. Clean any oil off of that. It don't need oil. It's like it says on it, use no oil. It was designed to not have any. Um, there is a piece of felt right here, too, that I didn't show you. This piece of felt is pretty bad shape. So I'll probably replace this. If you don't have a set of gasket cutters, which most people don't, uh, you can buy them at an auto parts store. They're really cheap. Buy a, pair, buy a set of gaskets, gasket cutters to where you can stamp out your own little gasket, your own little felt washers. And uh, if there is a big enough demand for these things, I'll stamp out some washers and I'll sell them. Um, okay. Anyway, that is the whole thing disassembled. That's every piece of it. Um, 
felt goes back on. The does not go on there. <laughs> this goes on here. On top of those two little pins. This business right here will go back in there. I'm not going to drive it back in because I want to clean this machine and I don't want to keep driving this back in and out. <clears throat> this piece here, the way I took it apart, you look at one side, it has ribs. Can you see them in the video? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other side smooth. Smooth side goes down in there. The little round washer goes top of it and this piece of felt and all that feeds right into it goes just like that and what you would do is you would push this wipe all the oil off of it you can see this has got oil on it or somebody has oiled this tensioner. Wipe all the oil off. This is leather. You push that up in there, followed by that spring, followed by that. Take you something uh, round, not shock screwdriver, but something round that you can push against it. A uh, uh, A stick that you stick food with what would it be a skewer <laughs> there you go the flat end of a skewer works real good push all us up in there as tight as you can up into the bottom push up make sure this here clears I'm not going to turn all this much over again and do all that because push it up in there these are going to meet in there like this All right, that there's where everything's going to set, plus the thickness of the metal. is going to stick it down just a little more. So you're going to have a little, you're going to have to push. Push it on. Reach it, put this piece in there, hold it together like I showed with the finger, taking it apart. Push that down in there as far as it'll go. And turn it. And there it is. It's locked back. And that's the way you would, just, you would just reassemble this. And don't worry, I will do this again as far as the reassembly. Uh, when I put this machine back together completely, I will start from a bare frame. And I'm going to do a series of videos uh, completely reassembling this machine. Um, and setting the rotary hook right here. Which is goes here I've ran that screw in right now so it's not going to go anyway this goes on the end of all this that is the only part of this machine <clears throat> that you can screw up and get out of time and the only way you can get it out of time is not have that flat on that but we'll get to that later um Right now, I just promised that I would show the disassembly and everything and the, and the way this tensioner works and try to clear up some of the ideas and everything that squirting oil in there is going to fix it. Um, and don't be scared to take these machines apart. They're not that hard to take apart, like I said in a post. Um, the tools that were required to take this machine apart came with the machine originally, which would have been nothing but a screwdriver and a wrench to take the needle bar and the presser foot off and that's pretty much all you have to have except the big screwdriver to take this bolt out right here and any household uh, in this time period would have had a big screwdriver to take this off so um, that is a hard screw to get off but we'll get to that later too and uh, thank you appreciate it and I hope this helps